Friends, one of the most effective ways that we have to prevent a self-defense encounter is controlling our ego. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Michigan. Here we're going to see a man who has some kind of an altercation with a guy in his car and it is going to go badly for him as the guy continues to try to attack him. We're going to learn important lessons here about de-escalation, escape, and avoidance, about the dangers of parking lots, and why we say to get out of the danger zone as fast as you can. So go check the news story on this. So see these two cars are both trying to turn left at different places and they're yipping at each other. They got mad because each other got in the way and so they're, you know, they're throwing hand signs at each other and yelling at one another. Now when this guy gets in this parking lot, he tells his wife to let him out of the car and he comes up here and he's starting to yip at this guy some more. And you can see him here, he's gonna throw up his hands and he's all kinds of mad. When the guy comes after him with the car and thankfully he just barely got out of the way of the guy, and he's still upset. Now again, the news story says that this guy is going to walk into the bar that's right here, but now when this guy comes back around, he's not done yet. He's offended and the road rage has happened and he's not thinking clearly. So now this dude gets out. Again, the news story says this guy's a prohibited possessor. He's on parole for weapons violations. But guess what? He has a gun on him anyways, and he tries to get into the bar from the side door, but it doesn't work. And the girl with him points out, oh, your victim is over there. So he's just going to run down the parking lot here. And you can see right there, take a shot at the guy. Thankfully, it didn't hit him. They got back in the car and ran off here. But they got caught a couple weeks later. Again, go read the news story in the description. You can see, thankfully, nobody was hurt. The real lesson out of this one is that road rage is stupid, everyone. Number one, don't get into road rage fights with people. People get all kinds of upset about what's going on in the car. A long way goes a, a little friendly wave, a little you know shrug of the shoulders, hey, sorry about that, goes a long way to diffusing conflicts. Don't escalate conflicts. Again, in all reality, you're never gonna see these people again, or worst case scenario is what we have happen here. So then the guy gets out to defend his ego. Again, he throws his hands in the air like, hey dude, what's your problem? Do you wanna fight? That's not gonna deescalate any conflict. If you are an active self-protector, you must learn the art of deescalation, escape, and avoidance, not escalating conflicts like this guy did here. Now, he's certainly not responsible for the guy attacking him. That's on him, but he didn't make his life any better. Next, as this guy comes here into the parking lot, no good stuff is gonna come out of there, and our perp you know, here is coming hard, and our victim is just standing there going, what are you gonna do? Well, he's gonna run you over, dude, get out of the way. This was stupid of him to stand there in the middle of the parking lot until he almost got run over there. You can see that he actually had to push away from the car, almost got himself run over and killed there, and then just stood around. Don't stay in a danger zone. Get the heck out of the danger zone. He was right to go inside of the bar at that point and try to get away from danger. But you got to recognize this right here is why road rage is so stupid. This is why you don't want to defend your ego. Because you never know if the idiot that you are having road rage with is a convicted felon who's a prohibited possessor but who has a gun and is willing to shoot you over an ego slide. And you do not want to be in that place. Now thankfully, like most bad guys, this guy can't shoot anything past 10 or 15 yards. He had almost no hope of hitting him and he's you know, running at him and pointing a gun with one hand. Almost no chance to hit him, but that doesn't mean there wasn't deadly peril out here. And there's some legal stuff to kind of think about here. The fact that he says, well, wait a minute, what if the other guy had pulled a gun at that point? Well, would the district attorney look at him as a provoker or an instigator of the fight because he's throwing his hands up and inviting the guy into combat? Maybe. Now, would that negate in that moment? He says, wow, he pulled a gun on me, so I pulled mine and shot him. Well, perhaps that would be an okay thing. But remember, you're going to pay a lawyer 500 bucks an hour to sit at your side while you make that case to the DA, when instead you could have easily just not had the road rage incident to begin with, never had to draw your firearm, didn't have to use it, avoided the whole thing, which is a much smarter way to cover your ass.